Ryan and Seth though. And, uh, mm. and Seth is, or Adam Brody has kind of said, and eh, not really all that interested. Um, so, of course he would say that. Right, exactly. Because <laughs> they want to they bring it back with them as the dads now, like older. Like a, oh, like yeah. a full house sort of thing. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think that God, would where's work. where's the time, though? <laughs> I was just saying, well, where's the time gone, right? Because, uh, you <laughs> no. know, they're doing the, these uh, these reboots, and now this one's due for a reboot, possibly. Yeah. <laughs> or you're saying that it's the Adam Brody putting a kibosh on it. it sounds like Adam like, Brody's putting the kibosh on it. And unless, gotcha. unless the, unless the creators are willing to kind of deviate from their plan of, you know, Hey, this is, this is what we think the reboot looks like. That's not going to happen. Mm, gotcha. And I gotcha. wouldn't want them, I wouldn't want them to deviate from their plan anyway. I trust them to, to make a good plan. Right. So. Yeah. 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 Uh, hey, uh, I, I was, I was looking at like what we were talking a little bit about Ryan stealing the car and, and it's actually Trey that stole the car. Ryan just happened to be with him. I, Yes, yeah. although I think they set out to steal the car that day. I don't know. But uh, they're they're stealing a Camaro, and I thought it was a Trans Am, but it is a Camaro. Um, <clears throat> and the cops, <laughs> it's, it's just so aggressive the way the cops, like, wreck the car immediately on the chase. <laughs> like, they're chasing mm-hmm. the, and they're, they're you know, very heavily high speed chasing these kids who stole this car. And then they like pit them into like a, into like a mailbox or whatever, a wall or mailbox or whatever, like immediately that's like before anything else happens, we're going to wreck these kids uh, in this stolen car. It felt very, very aggressive to me. But what I will say is that other than that, we don't really see much involvement from the cops in the whole first season. And it, it's yeah. it's really funny to me because there's so many crimes committed. <laughs> <laughs> and we don't we hardly ever see the cops. And it's again, it's the difference between sort of, you know, rich, poor, white, black, sort of socioeconomic and racial sort of elements that factor into this you know the cops don't show up to rich people's houses in newport for petty crimes they just don't but if if ryan lived in chino he they'd be all over him right they'd be hassling him constantly and so it's it's an interesting sort of uh sort of dynamic there that you know it's not it's never really heavily highlighted or heavily featured in the show but it's definitely something it has to be they don't talk about it in the book or anything like that but it has to be something that they had in mind what they do, oh, they t- do. Oh, sorry go ahead oh i was just to say that they, they do like make references to oh you know like in in orange county they, oh like the newport in particular oh uh what's her name uh where, where where that hotel is that she's staying at in the numbered streets you know like so this oh, particular right. neighborhood yeah, is yeah. yeah in the numbered yeah streets. yeah yeah so they, they do make references and then they, they always have the visuals as, as far as all the wealth and stuff, you know, like to s- establish, oh, we're in uh, Newport or Orange County or whatever. And, yep. uh, but, uh, yeah, I, I think you're, uh, I think that's pretty, that's pretty spot on as far as that's concerned. Well, yeah. they talked, they talked a little bit in the book about the whole thing about them that they don't show, they, they, f- you could tell they felt bad about not having a more diverse cast, even when it goes like deep, like when they have 50 people on the screen, they're all white people. <laughs> they're all white people. Yeah. <laughs> like there's no, there's no Asians. There's no Indians. Like you, you would, even if, even if you're like going, okay, well, we're going to base this on socioeconomic status. And of course, you know, among the rich and powerful in Newport, it's going to be mostly white people, but you have to figure that there's some physicians and engineers and things like that, yeah. that might not be, uh, might not be white people. That, that are also yeah, like yeah. they'd be Asian right. or yeah. Yeah. But right. not black. No, no. I'm kidding. No. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> There's, there is a scene. There is a scene with the diverse cast and you know what it is? It's the scene when, uh, when Julie gets strippers for her bachelorette party. Oh, that's right. <laughs> I was like, there are two black strippers and an Asian stripper bringing the total number of minorities in Newport to six, <laughs> the <laughs> detention kids, the principal and these strippers. <laughs> Cause the principal's Asian. That's right. Yeah. Dr. Uh, whatever her name was, Dr. Yeah. Lee or whatever. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> 
<laughs> While we're on the topic of Julie's bachelor party or bachelorette party, I don't have much else for it. You know, she wants bottomless strippers and bottomless margs. And I'm like, you know what? Yeah. Who am I to judge? Uh, <laughs> she talks about these, these strip clubs and, and she, the, the bottomless male strip clubs, Mantopia, the stud farm and the petting zoo. <laughs> Yeah, which that's are right. absolutely amazing names. I came up with a couple of others. Uh, I liked the barber shop <laughs> because of <laughs> the poles <laughs> and the chicken shack. I liked that because it's a cock reference. <laughs> I was trying to, cause you know, look, it, it, it feels like a very trivial exercise to come up with, uh, uh, the names of, uh, strip clubs with, with naked dudes that are sort of that lean gay. It, fe- yeah, <laughs> it feels, yeah. it feels very <laughs> hack to sort of do that. So I was trying to come up with ones that felt very, uh, uh, ambivalent about sexuality. <laughs> <laughs> I do like the idea of the heavy petting, the heavy petting zoo. The whatever. heavy petting zoo. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> Uh, at the same time, uh, the uh, bachelor party, I, I don't know when, we're, when else we're going to talk about this, so, so I'm going to mention it here. The, uh, the bachelor party for Caleb, uh, do, they do that in Vegas, and the OC definitely took lessons from Entourage for the Vegas scenes. <laughs> Did you notice that? <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> the pool and the casino is stuffed with all these like gorgeous women just walking around. It's like, uh, it's like you're at a, like some sort of retreat or summit for models <laughs> entourage is notorious for that yeah. too right like just like you know, like i don't know i i started re-watching some of those those episodes like the, the entourage episodes yeah and it's like it's, it's like borderline baywatch you know like baywatch is notorious <laughs> for doing that too yeah yes, you know? yes. <laughs> it's like baywatch that's great no, yeah i'm betting no. that show doesn't age, didn't age real well <laughs> 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 I haven't revisited that since it stopped airing, but I'm guessing it's uh, shameful. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, they did do a, a, a just they did a, do a movie version of Baywatch with The Rock and uh, I forgot who else, uh, but uh, it definitely. Oh yeah, Kristen uh, Bell. Was it Kristen Bell? Yeah, Kristen Bell was in that. Oh okay. Yeah, oh, I think you're right. And yeah. Zach, Zach Efron, uh, and I think, right? Zach Efron, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. And, uh, yeah, that movie, the movie was on the same level as the show, which is, it wasn't very good, but high production values. I'll just yeah. say that. <laughs> <laughs> high production values. Yeah. I, uh, you know, you, you had mentioned uh, one of the things that I didn't that I didn't get to when you had mentioned that party in the first episode. Uh, there's a there's a moment there um, where they walk into the party and the original version of the Black Eyed Peas song "Let's Get Retarded" is playing yes. in the <laughs> is playing at the party, and it just it just goes out over the TV. It's they put it on TV. They put that song oh, awesome. on television. It's still in. It's still in the DVD or still in the HBO stream of the show. It's absolutely wild to me. But this is one of the. Uh, <laughs> it's one of the Howard Dean things that I said about 2004, back when it was still okay to say retarded on on television, uh, yeah. or at least not not problem not as problematic as it is now to say it i think it's coming back i, th- I think you know there's gonna be a back <laughs> is there a renaissance <laughs> i think there's gonna be a renaissance our word retarded. renaissance yes, yes. <laughs> yeah yeah the other the if other not, thing yeah if not uh the groundless uh, newport podcast is gonna bring it back at my on its own <laughs> oh good. good 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 i'm glad that you're, you you that level of commitment to the bit i appreciate it thank you let's skip to uh Julie and Luke. <laughs> so <laughs> just never, never has the OC felt more like a soap opera. Than, oh yeah. Then yeah. when Julie starts banging Luke, right? It, it's, it's so good. And it's so funny. The, the night moves, <laughs> the Bob Seger music in the background is wonderful. And then later, when they revisit it later, and Luke is blaring it out of his car, drinking after, <laughs> drinking after they yeah. break off. 
it's it's really really funny and uh i i really enjoy that and and you know i enjoy i also enjoy sort of julie taking ownership of that right she comes to the parent teacher conference in full sort of mrs robinson attire yeah. and basically tells them hey come by and bang me later <laughs> And they only get caught because they're banging in the same shitty motel that Teresa is staying in. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And the mer- it's the Mermaid Inn in Newport. And and the thing that I found the most funny about the Mermaid Inn in Newport is when you go into the lobby of the Mermaid Inn in Newport, there are like 30 clocks on the wall for different yeah. time zones. <laughs> like, they're, <laughs> like there's some sort of international tourist hotel. <laughs> like they're the four seasons Singapore or something. It's, it's the continental, like in the John Wick yes, series. Exactly. Like, but very downscale. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's no concierge. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, so funny. And then Seth and Ryan, of course, Forrest Gump their way into seeing Julie and Luke <laughs> at that hotel because they go there looking for Teresa and, and Luke just happens to be there. And and it's great because Ryan Ryan definitively makes the right call. I've never felt this way about a girl woman before. Yeah, I don't care. Tomorrow, Marissa's going to L.A. You, you're going to Julie's. It's going to end. Got it? It's going to end. He's like, hey, you got to stop right now. <laughs> You're going to ruin everyone's life. You have to stop this. And and Luke, to his credit, is like, yeah, you know what? You're right. <laughs> oh, yeah. Banging my ex-girlfriend's mother. Is, uh, yeah, there's something wrong with that, it's right? pretty far down the list of terrible. Yeah, exactly. And that that's ultimately he decides to move to Portland with his gay dad because of yeah. all of that. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> but but it's uh yeah, it's 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 really something. <laughs> but I, so I what do I'm getting love that scene. Oh go ahead, go ahead. No, no, I'm I'm I, I do love that storyline. I think it's really great. I think it's as it's very soap opera y and I enjoy yeah. it. Yeah. And it's it's uh, yeah it's it's like it's so out of left field like for me I remember the first time I'm like oh my god that's crazy <laughs> right <laughs> but uh, what I was gonna say is the thing that uh, like if you've uh, like made it this far is that Ryan actually is like the, he he makes good calls yes basically when he's, everything he's done is proper and then, but the the results aren't what you would expect right. I mean, that's right. Like he, he makes these great, the, the correct calls, uh, each time in each situation and, uh, and be, and, and is very mature, but it just doesn't work out. For yeah. Him. The outcome, the outcome yeah, doesn't, okay. doesn't reconcile <laughs> because something, yeah. something goes haywire along the way. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Because it's yeah. absolutely, I mean, he did everything exactly correctly, but Marissa found out anyway. <laughs> 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 that's right and then and then it's so great the way marissa tries to turn the tables like she's like oh i have this information so i am going to stop my mom by telling caleb and caleb's like yeah i already know that shit <laughs> <laughs> and by the way you're moving back into my house <laughs> and, and, and there's another freak in that uh, that burden that she has like, yeah you exactly. have to move in <laughs> She's she's basically I mean it's at by the end of the first season she's basically kept like a princess kept locked behind the walls of a castle right it's, it, it's yeah, that's exactly that's very accurate yeah she has a prison uh in, in a castle a literal a, palace yeah, it's a velvet <laughs> velvet prison right velvet handcuffs yeah, yeah. You want to call uh, yeah. yeah that's fantastic <laughs> yeah so uh let's see anything else on Luke and Julie no, I don't have anything else. Wouldn't it have been funny if uh, Luke had knocked up Julie, though? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Again, one of those things that they could have done if they hadn't burned through through, through too much story, right? That's right. <laughs> like, at least a pregnancy scare. <laughs> oh, I know. That would have been a good cliffhanger, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yep. 
another minor sort of relationship here. Uh, I just want to talk about Jimmy Cooper a little bit, Jimmy and uh, Jimmy and Haley. And I, we haven't really talked about Haley yet, so I think there's a few a few things we want to talk about her. But it's it's interesting <laughs> because there's the age gap here too, right? And yeah. so Haley yeah. is Haley is Kirsten's young. 